So thank you so much for the opportunity. Well, I'm waiting for my slides to come on. I really want this to be an interactive session, um, but I know that we'll have the panel a little bit later. So I'm hoping to sort of talk to you about things that I'm excited about that are a little newer in my aloma, but also spend the last five minutes to talk about living with myeloma. Because the good news is we're all living, we see our patients living longer and how to actually make best of that journey down the road. So we're gonna talk about something really, really new that are sort of up and coming, but, but also um, kind of, can you, okay. Um, so I work both at University Hospital, but also over at the VA hospital in, in Annapolis. As I was um, mentioning earlier about the Agent Orange exposure, could you please go ahead? So my assignment is to talk about this novel antibodies and the living well with myeloma. Can you advance for me? It freezes. Okay, all right. If it doesn't, if no other slides work, this first one will do. So because we talk about anti, well, immunotherapy, I wanted us to think a little bit about what the immune system does. The difference between the immunotherapy comparing to any other myeloma treatments you've heard about is it is actually utilizing the tool that's more specific to the cancer cells and sparing the normal cells. Our immune system requires sort of teams of different members working together. The first one I want you to keep paying attention to is that green cell, that's B cell. That's actually the cell that has a little fork sticking out that has a receptor to bind to antigens. Think about if you're infected, there are gonna be unique protein in the germs that these B cells can bind to. Then that complex get put back into the B cells, B cells digest it and project the whatever is in the germs onto the surface, which can then be seen by the T cell. So now second character come in, the T cell and the B cell are talking to each other. That activates a whole lot of secreted little yellow dots called lympho uh, lymphokines that actually activate the plasma cell production. You might have recalled when Dr. Gertz was talking about the plasma cells from making antibodies to protect you. That's really kind of half of the system. If you go to the next slide, there's a second group of the T cell that's not just the first one that work with the B cell, this one are actually the killer, the cytotoxic T cells. They can recognize different surface antigens in the infected cells or in the tumor cells, and then they help kind of shoo it up. So you need all of these to work together well for us to be healthy and also for the tumor cells to not be there when the cells are making mistake, when they're generated, they get destroyed. There are reasons that the immune system is insufficient at controlling the patient's myeloma. So the immunotherapy is asking, can we modify these tools to get them to work better so that we're actually able to be very specific to kill the cancer cells without hurting other normal cells around them? One more. So there are all kinds of antibody therapy that's been in development, some of which you have already had. Um, might have actually been exposed to. The group on the top right are called naked antibody. The antibody looks almost like fork. It has the sticky ends that bind onto the surface of things that we want to destroy. So antibodies that have already been generated in the lab to bind onto surface marker, abnormal spots on the surface of the cancer cells are gonna be that Darselex or Daratuma map, is a toximab and another molecule called latuzumab but can we do better? And the answer is yes. So there are two different families of antibodies that are a little different. One is called antibody drug conjugate or ADC. The other one is called bispecific. And I will leave the T cell retraining tool, um, which is the CAR T to Dr. Goods to explain to you about. Can you advance for me? So, what happened when the naked antibody bind onto the surface of the cancer cell? You imagine I'm the cancer, we're hanging out, you're all normal cells in the bone marrow. This antibody come in, it sees certain spot in me that's uniquely expressed, bind onto me. If there's a lot of them all over, if there are a lot of antibodies, they'll poke holes into the cells and kill it. 
Otherwise, it also call in the immune system to come in and say, hey, that guy is marked for destruction, eat it up. So that's how the naked antibody works. One more. But the antibody are conjugate is different. So there's still that antibody, but it actually carries a little toxin. That toxin is attached to the antibody so tightly it won't break apart. But when it binds onto the surface of the cancer cell, it gets internalized and it's the enzyme with in the cancer cell that clip off that poison. So you imagine you're now delivering poison rather than straight into the vein and it goes and hit every other cell. It actually hits specifically right at the target. That is the cancer cell. So this antibody conjugate has actually been uh, quite a boon. The first drug has already been approved. It's called Valantamab mapidotin. Um, and hopefully several more are coming about. It was tested in patients who have already failed more than four lines of therapy. And it is an IV infusion every three weeks. The common side effects are low platelets and there's a unique eye side effect. Can you forward? The eye side effect is actually this little cyst. The, if you think about the, those little green dots, that's actually the deposit of, of the toxin that's released from the cancer cell. And it causes dry eye, blurry eye. So certainly um, a side effect that could affect patient's quality of life. So patients who get this kind of treatment need to also see ophthalmologists and be followed closely. The other group of medicine is something called bispecific. So rather than having just the fork, you imagine having two forks fused together. One actually stick onto the cancer cell, the other actually stick onto the T cell. And you're doing a matchmaking, forcing the T cell to recognize the cancer and kill it off. The T cells and the cancer cells otherwise may just whim around each other and they don't see each other. So that by specific um, molecule is typically given either IV or, or as an injection and it's not yet approved, but we expect that it might, the first one just might become available in the later part of this year. Can you advance please? So there's so many that are actually racing against each other to the finish line. The only thing I want to point at is the response rate with this by specific is quite phenomenal because it was first tested in patients who've actually failed literally everything. And the response rate is really in the 60 some 70%, which is actually quite unheard of in that space. So when we think about the CAR T being such a promising thing, this would be another tool that you'll get to see in the market pretty soon. Now, so because there's so many different tools, how might I see them um, looking same or different? So the CAR T is something that I, Dr. Goetz is gonna mention, but it requires production process, which takes time. But the ADC and the bispecific are what we call off the shelf. So you just be able to use it pretty readily. Um, and um, they're mostly, the difference is gonna be they're given repetitively while the CAR T cell is sort of thought to be a once in a lifetime thing. So in my mind, all of these tools, who will get it depending on how fast you really need the treatment under control and also how frail might patients be. More frail patients may not sustain that cytokine release syndrome side effect of the CAR T. People with existing neurological problem might not be a good candidate. So they might be doing better with the off the shelf product. How might you sequence this thing is gonna be answered on the clinical trial mostly. But because these tools are so new and myeloma is yet rare, I would encourage that as you're thinking about going through a different line of therapy because there's progression, that there is a need to seek some expert consultation because who is gonna actually be able to help you getting through um, all of these treatments is really gonna be the, the champion on your side. Now, living with myeloma, Right, we talk about patients outlasting patients. This uh, outlasting the doctors this day. I told my patients I'm going to retire in 15 years, and I know that many of them are going to actually probably need younger doctor that they may potentially outlast again. So, Dr. Kurtz already mentioned to you about bone disease, so important for myeloma patients. Um, he showed you those holes in the bones, and that's exactly what the red arrow show. Rather than the bone being nice and thick, the calcium is eroded and patient can have collapse of the spine just like that. So you can imagine just how painful that might be. Cancer that's in the bone also take advantage of the environment. It's actually helping the cancer cells living longer. So treatment of the bone is important. Um, you might've heard about two different classes of drug. One is called bisphosphonate, things like somata, for example. It goes and binds to the bone. And when the bone eating cells come about to shoo the bone, it just kills off the bone eating cells. 
On the other hand, the newer choice is something called denosumab. It's given as an injection. It actually blocks the particular factor, a growth factor of the bone eating cell. So both works and both should be used in conjunction with your other myeloma therapy. Key points. I was already saying, use it together with your myeloma therapy. Also, we now learn that you don't have to use it forever and ever. Usually we wanna be aggressive with the bone treatment in the first year, but then decrease the frequency later. The shot, the denosumab has a unique effect in that. Once you stop it down the road, you might end up waking up some of these bone eating cells which were quiet. So you might end up needing maybe a dose of that Zometa Madison just to put it back to rest again, and then you're done. Important to see your dentist because of this particular complication called osteonecrosis of the jaw, which is really eroded bone that's infected and exposed to all of the bugs in the, in the mouth and it doesn't heal well. Now, you want good oslo, uh, good, good surgeon to help following you because if they go in there and scrape off this dead tissue, they might just make the, the wound even bigger and might not heal. Calcium vitamin D cannot be um, um, overemphasized here. And I want to highlight that physical activity is key. It turned out that even though we realized that exercise is important for bone health, muscle health, there was a survey that was evaluating for patients' baseline activity. And it turned out that only about 25% of myeloma patients actually had relatively active lifestyle when they were diagnosed. Now that might've been bone pain and so on, but also goes to say that we know that we could do better. There's also a concept of, you know that treatments are gonna be hard, transplant is gonna be hard, rather than waiting to go to rehab after transplant, well, get yourself stronger first, do a prehab, so that hopefully you tolerate treatment better. Infection is the primary cause of death for patients that's not progressing from, from their cancer. So you gotta keep yourself protected. Prevention is key. Vaccine, prophylactic antibiotics, and also really a general infection precaution, particularly as we're talking about COVID. So don't lower your guard very much just yet. Who are at highest risk? People with active myeloma, people with high tumor burden, patients with renal failure, or some with unique problem with the cord compression because they're not ambulatory and there might be problem with the bladder infection and so on. Last but not least is also be, be sure you follow with your primary care doctor because second primary malignancy is another thing that we need to, we need to be mindful of. Uh, Long-term complications of the treatments we use may induce the other cancers that's not myeloma down the road. So see your doctor and do routine cancer screening. Be attentive to your health. So that's all I have.